Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 4 of Direwolf20's Computer Craft Tutorial Series. Today we'll be covering conditional statements, otherwise known typically as if-then statements. Uh, there's a couple other conditionals that we'll get into, like the else and the else if and stuff like that, but for the most part it's going to be uh, pretty much focusing around what an if statement is. And these are uh, statements that you can use to control the way your code runs. Uh, sometimes you don't want certain pieces of code to run unless other pieces of code uh, match your expected output. Output. And uh, I'll get into a little bit of what that means in this episode. So sit back and relax and enjoy some conditional logic. All right, let's get started. All right, so uh, I'm going to get started playing around on my little turtle here that I made in the last episode. And I'd like to show you guys how to make an if statement. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so I'm going to create a new program called If Then. Nice and simple. And this is going to be a tutorial on if then statements. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the way we can use if then statements to control the way our code functions. Now, in the past, you've seen that code will execute one line after another, and you have yet not yet seen anything that can interrupt that. So, right now, we've got the print statements pretty well under control. We've got hello world, which we've done before, and we've got variables. And we can assign this variable equal to five, and we'll print variable cool now this program should print hello world and then it should print out variable colon space 5 let's check it out if then hey work just like we've expected all right now let's look into what if we don't want certain situations to occur um, based perhaps on this variable x that we've got here so x is currently set to 5 now we can create what's called an if then statement to check the condition of the variable x and then proceed based on what it is. Let's write that now. So we'll write if x equals equals 5. Then, now here's the part where it's a little bit of a flavor type thing. You don't have to do this, it won't matter in the code, but it makes your code a little bit easier to read. So it's typically standard to put two or three spaces um, inside this uh, little area here, and you'll get used to this as we go along. But for now, just note that I'm putting spaces here just because uh, just that's kind of a good thing to do. Um, then we're going to say if x is currently equal to 5, then we'll print 5. And then we'll say end. And then we'll print we're done. And let's look at what this does right now. Okay. Um, what should happen is just like before, we're going to print hello world. Then we're going to create a variable called x and make it equal to 5. Then we'll print out variable and it'll print out the number 5 like it did a moment ago. Now our new set of code is here. And what this is going to do is it's going to check if x is currently equal to 5, and that's why we have a double equal sign here. When you have a single equal sign, you're assigning the number uh, 5 to the variable x. So x gets assigned the number 5, but with the double equal, you're checking to see if it currently equals 5. So there's two different things going on here. One's forcing it to equal 5, and one's checking to see if it's equal to 5. And it says if it is equal to 5, then do everything that follows until we find the end statement. So uh, right now we're going to say print 5. Now we don't have to keep this just one line, or we could have another one that says print I said 5. And we'll save that. Now once it hits the end, we're done with what's inside these brackets. And that's why I've stopped putting the spaces here. You'll notice that we've only spaced out the things inside um, the if and the end lines. And that makes it just a little bit easier to read. It jumps out at you saying, hey, this is the part of the code that's kind of within this if statement section. It makes it easier for the reader to see what's going on. And then we'll print we're done. So let's save the program. Now, if I run if then, you'll see that it says hello world and it defines the variable as five. And it says five, I said five, and we're done. Pretty straightforward because x was equal to 5. Now if we change this to say, I don't know, let's make x equal to 6. Now x is currently 6 and what should happen is the if conditional here is going to check if 6 is equal to 5 and that's going to turn out to be false. 6 does not equal 5. So it's going to skip everything and it's going to go straight past this section of code to the end block right here. So let's go ahead and save this and exit and we'll put our if then again. Note that it skipped the part that said 5, I said 5. So it only ran when x is equal to 5. Next, we'll move into an else statement. So an else is kind of like, what do I do otherwise? You might want to execute some code if 
x is not equal to 5. And that's pretty much what the else is. It's kind of the everything else conditional. It says, um, you know, let's do this. Not 5. I said not 5. Okay, so what this means is uh, if x is currently equal to 5, then run this bit of code. Otherwise, run this bit of code. And uh, pretty much under no circumstances will both sets of code run at the same time. So we'll either get one set of code or the other executing. And then we'll go ahead and save this and execute it. So let's go ahead and uh, set x to 5 again and run the program. You'll see that it says 5, I said 5, and then it goes down to we're done. So what this is doing is it's executing these lines of code, and then it's skipping the else block because um, x was equal to 5. Now if we make x equal to 6, what it's going to do is it's going to check the conditional of x. 6 is not equal to 5, so it's going to skip these two lines right here, and it's going to move on to the else block, and it's going to run that code. Then it'll print we're done. Note that it says not 5. Cool. Now just like before, we can do a little bit of math, we can do a little bit of trickery. Let's say uh, our variable is currently equal to 6, and we want to check if x minus 1 is equal to 5. Well, x is 6, x minus 1 is 5, and 5 is equal to 5, so we should get this set of code running. Let's see what happens. Ta-da! It says 5. Awesome. Even though the variable is currently 6, uh, we're saying what's 6 minus 1, we get 5. Perfect. And you don't have to check um, for just equality. You can check some other things. Um, for example, we can check for greater than or less than. So let's do this. We'll say the following. And then here we'll just comment out this line. So what I'm checking for here is if x is currently greater than 5. Um, and if it is, it'll output greater. Otherwise, it's going to print out lesser. Um, and if I really wanted to be correct about this, I'd say lesser or equal. Because if it's 5, it's going to fail. 5 is not greater than 5. So we'll go down here and it'll execute lesser or equal. Cool. Let's give this a shot. x is currently 6. 6 is greater than 5. So we should get the command that says greater. Perfect. And if we make it 4, we get lesser or equal. Cool. Now sometimes you'd like to check multiple things. Perhaps you want to check for the following. Let's output greater if it's greater than 5, output lesser if it's less than 5, and then output equal if it's equal to 5. Make sense? Yeah, we might want to do that. For that, we want to use the else if statement. And what that means is it's basically saying check this first, check first for x is greater than 5, and if that doesn't work, move on to the next else if block and check that conditional, which in this case we're going to check for x is less than 5. And if that's the case, then output lesser. And then finally, we'll do else. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to check if x is greater than 5. If it is, it's going to print out greater, and then it's going to stop right there. It's going to jump to the end line. Um, if it's not greater than 5, it's going to check if x is less than 5. If it is, it'll print out lesser. And if it's not, um, it'll print out equal. Because if it's not greater than it's not less than, it's got to be equal to, right? Perfect. So let's run this code now and see how well it works. So right now the variable is 4, and we get lesser. Cool. And if we go ahead and edit this guy again and make the variable 6, we should get greater. And if we make it 5, we should get equal. Perfect. So what happened when it was 5 is it checked if it was greater, it failed, it moved on to the else if, it failed, and then it moved on to else, and it was done. So your else will almost every circumstance execute. Um, the only time it might not execute is, I don't know, if a program crashes or something, um, but something is going to execute within this uh, block if you have an else. It'll either be one of these three lines. Now, sometimes you'd like to check for more than one thing. Uh, we're going to leave this conditional block alone, and we're going to create a new one. And this guy, we're going to check for x and y both being greater than 5. Okay? So for this, we want to use an and statement. Let's check it out. If x is, equal, is greater than 5 and y is greater than 5, then... 
both greater. Else, not both greater. Okay? And here I'll do this. And just for consistency's sake, make it a capital V. Okay, so this is going to run first before this set of code, and this set of code is still going to run. Um, so what we're going to see here is it's going to check if x is equal to is greater than five and y is greater than five. In this case, they both are, so this should turn out to be true. Let's save and exit and run if then. Uh, we get both greater, and remember we got greater because x is greater than five. Cool. Now, if one of these turns out to not be greater than five, okay, we'll get x is greater than 5 and y is greater than 5? Nope, that doesn't turn out because y is 4. So in this case, we should get not both greater. Even though x is greater than 5, we're using and, which means both of these must be true in order for this to turn out to be the both greater line. Not both greater. Cool. Um, pretty neat. If we want to only check for one of them to be true, then we can use or. This will say if x is greater than 5 or y is greater than 5. Well, one of these is greater than 5, isn't it? x is. Cool. I didn't change the wording, but it does say both greater, which means that this line of code executed. We'll make this say 1 is greater. And this guy can say neither is greater. Now, if neither is greater, so x greater than 5 or y greater than 5, nope, neither one of them match. So we're going to get the neither greater line. And if both of them are matching, we'll still get 1 is greater. Cool. All right, Dyer, that's all well and good for playing with math, but math is boring. Turtles are fun. Let's make a turtle do something. All right, let's try this. Okay, I'm going to place a block in front of the turtle. Now, if you recall, and I'm going to exit out of this program for a moment and edit, or uh, just run Lua. When we do a turtle dot detect, it'll tell me true or false if something is in front of the block. So true if there's a block in front and false if there's not a block in front. Okay? Neat. Now this is also true for when you try and move forward. Let's run turtle.forward. Okay? It's gonna say false. Why? Well, probably because it doesn't have any fuel in it. Let's get some. Alright, let's try that again. Turtle.forward. It says true. Cool. So we can check whether or not the turtle properly moved forward. Now, if there's a block in front of it, he can't move forward. Gotcha. All right, let's put some of this to the test using if-then statements. Let's edit our if-then program. Now, I'm going to leave all this code here so it's still going to run. But I'm going to add some new lines to the bottom here because I want to upload this whole thing to Pastebin for you guys to play with in a bit. So let's try this out now. I'm going to execute the command turtle.forward. But the way I'm going to do that is inside an if statement. So let's do it now. I'm going to execute if, and then I'm going to say turtle.forward. Then print moving forward. Cool. And what that should do is if the turtle successfully moves forward, he's going to print moving forward. Otherwise, print stuck. Okay, so now let's have him go backwards a few steps. And notice I gave him a pickaxe as well. I'm going to have him go forward. I'm going to do if then. And what this should do is execute all the code from a moment ago, and then it's going to tell me it's moving forward. Hey, he moved forward. Perfect. Now if there's a block in his way, and we execute if then, it's going to tell me he's stuck. Uh-oh, poor turtle, he's stuck. Let's do something about that. Instead of just printing stuck, we'll say stuck mining. And then we'll do turtle.dig. And then we'll do turtle.forward. Cool. 
So what this will do is if it successfully moves forward, it's just going to say, hey, I moved forward, and then be done. However, if he fails to move forward, he's going to print stuck and mining, and then he's going to dig up the block in front of him and then move forward again. Now the way this works is that the turtle.forward command returns true if he successfully moves forward. So basically, um, when this runs, it just comes back with the word true. And this line then reads, if true, then print moving forward, and then it's done. So it's just like when it's set up here, if x is greater than 5, x greater than 5 resolves to either true or false. And then if it's true, it moves on. And if it's false, it skips this line and moves to the next else if statement. So that's the same thing that's happening here. Turtle.forward comes back and says true, and then it executes this line of code. Now if he fails to move forward, he's going to come back and say false. So then it's going to execute what's in the else block. So let's give this a shot now. I'm going to save and exit. And just for purposes of proving this, I'm going to go ahead and have him move without the block in front. He's going to say moving forward, and you noticed he did. Cool. Now I'm going to put a cobblestone block in front of him and execute the exact same program. This time he's going to say we're stuck. I'm going to mine. He's going to break the block in front of him and then move forward. Cool. Very nice. So as you can see, guys, the if-then-else statements are very, very useful uh, for uh, doing a whole bunch of cool commands. Uh, it's really going to be useful for you as you proceed with your programming career to be able to use if-then statements. You're going to run into a lot of situations very quickly where you're going to want to be able to control which parts of code run and which parts of code do not run based on certain situations. In fact, I dare say the if statement may be one of your most commonly used um, functions. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, learning about conditional statements within ComputerCraft. For now, I'm going to go ahead and save and paste bin this. Paste bin put if then. So there you go. Um, now you've got a paste bin that you can go and uh, check this out. You can go ahead and pull it down to your computers and mess around with it inside ComputerCraft, which I recommend you do just to get a feel for if then statements because they're going to be very important in future episodes. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on the ComputerCraft tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Episode 4. Take it easy. <laughs>